All right, ladies and gents, uh, kind of a little bit of a different project this weekend. I have here a DIY kit for two-channel oscilloscope from our friends at JYE Tech. I did purchase this, and um, I'm going to go ahead and, and start putting this together and hopefully use it in some of the upcoming um, metal detector builds. All right, let's get into this. All right, the first step is to connect the micro USB and okay, the first step is to connect the micro USB to a power source and turn it on here and okay it's coming to life it's going through its test and that's a good first step at least we know we have a good screen alright let's get on to the next step and start putting some components on the board alright ladies and gents uh, back to the Wave 2 oscilloscope build show you what parts have been populated on the board thus far we have this uh, 2 by one pin header right here we've got the 7 by 2 pin header we have this signal terminal jumper over here and a 4x1 pin header right here and then this 5x1 pin header here which the breakout board is going to go on top of and you'll see that next all right I figured I'd give you a close-up of this breakout board you can see this is number 117 this is breakout board number two and these both breakout boards are optional um, this is the one that I'm going to install which will enable a switch action to turn the unit on and off without having to just unplug it for that function alright so here is the breakout board that I just installed and when you install this one there was a surface mount resistor right here you see it's missing so I took that out that enables the breakout board to be in the circuit and that breakout board as I think I might have said already it's optional and it's giving the rotary encoder also the function of acting as an on and off switch by pressing on the dial so that's what that is alright guys I hadn't intended to do any soldering here but with these BNC connectors I figured I'd give it a shot um, let's see what we can do with this big chisel tip that looks good Try to get this one. That looks good. Give it a wipe. These things really soak up the uh, soak up the heat. So I'm hoping that this is going to be successful. Okay, here's a shot of the analog board with all the uh, resistors in place. Just finished soldering those in place. I've got the two BNC connectors in place as well as this uh, 6x2 pin header. Just soldered that on and now I'll continue with assembly. 
Okay, now we're on to the uh, front module assembly. See, we've got the face of the board and the uh, the rubber rubber button covers. So we're just simply going to put these in place, right? And like that. And now we're going to get the screen and push the screen in place. Alright, you can see the next step here. We've simply uh, taken the LCD screen, flipped it off the main board and onto the faceplate in, into its notches. So it's, it's sitting in there loosely right now. And now we're going to uh, fold the PCB over onto the faceplate and put the rotary controller on. Okay, here's the main board folded over onto the faceplate and you see we have the rotary encoder on its uh, little PCB and that is face down. Next I'm going to take a couple of screws put them through here to the posts and then solder these four um, header pins to complete that circuit. Alright ladies and gents uh, <clears throat> we're going to go through the uh, voltage verification on these various test points. I'm just going to go right through them. I'm not going to show you the board, just showing you the what's on the multimeter. Okay. And we're going to start off with uh, VS plus. There we go, VS plus. We're supposed to be greater than 7. We are. Uh, next, VS minus. We're minus 6.94. Looks pretty good. And next, we go to AB1 plus and AB2 plus. And here's AB1 plus. That's good. AB2 plus. Good, we get 5 volts. Now AV1 minus and AV2 minus. Here is AV1 minus. So we got minus 5. AV2 minus. We got minus 5. Now uh, <clears throat> V11 and V21. We should be right around zero volts. V here's V21. Okay. And V11. Pretty close. V12 and V22. There's V22. This should also be zero volts. We're 17.2. Yeah, we're almost zero. Um, and V11. Okay, uh, V13 and V23. Here's V23. And where's V13? There it is. <clears throat> And V14 and V24. Here's V24. That's correct. It's a 1.69. Supposed to be within 10% of 1.65, so that's good. And V14. Where's V14? There it is. And we're good there, 1.696. We're within 10% of 1.65. All right, so that's the voltage verification. So far, so good. All right, so I just did a, a little calibration, and this is what the waveform looks like now. It, it's it's kind of tricky to calibrate with the... Um, little tremor capacitor because it's, it's 
really almost buried in the board. Um, <clears throat> it's back inside here. Let's see if I can tip this and show you. You can see it back there. It's actually right back here next to the BNC right before those resistors. But we're looking pretty good and I'm going to go ahead and box this up and give it a little run. Okay, just a quick shot of the analog board placed into the uh, back portion of the enclosure. Nothing complicated. Now just going to add four screws to the four uh, semi-corners there and then we'll continue. Alright guys, here's the final product. Um, I'm just connected to the test point on the oscilloscope. So, not a bad little project. Um, I will use this on my next uh, pulse induction project which is coming up hopefully this next week. I'm going to be starting a, a hammerhead PI machine. So look forward to it and look forward to your comments and thanks for watching.